I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Your LinkedIn profile could probably use some love. I know that mine desperately needed it. I updated it recently and I thought I would share some of those tips so that you can too. On this channel, I talk a lot about LinkedIn, Instagram, personal branding, and other social media platforms. A lot of practical advice to look good online. If these are topics that interest you, stick around. Consider subscribing and hit the bell to be notified when I post next. Now, six LinkedIn profile tips. Today I'm in Cabo and the question comes from Vitor who asks, Phil, it's time to update your LinkedIn profile. When is that gonna happen? Yes, Vitor, you have called me out. While I often find myself hanging around on platforms like Instagram, LinkedIn for me is a little less frequent, but it's an important place to be and it's an important profile to optimize. Vitor is a friend of mine and he is a LinkedIn expert who helps people improve their LinkedIn profiles. He has offered to help me today to bring my profile up to date, and I'm mentioning him in this video as a way of saying thank you, Vitor, for all of the help. I'll link to Vitor's LinkedIn below so that you can reach out to him if you also need some help. He is awesome. Now, boiling down to six profile tips, let's start with the first one. Tip number one, choose great photos. Keep in mind, you've got two opportunities for photos on your profile. Your profile photo, which LinkedIn crops as a circle, and your cover photo, which is shown above that. These photos are like little soldiers that work on your behalf online. Instead of someone meeting you in real life, face to face, they're experiencing the online version of you, and that's these two photo opportunities. That's why they're really important. First, let's talk about your profile photo. It should be closely cropped into your face. The majority of instances when people see this picture is beside content that you post, so it's shown pretty small. Don't be afraid to crop in pretty close to your face so that people can identify that it's you. It's also a good idea to use a LinkedIn photo where you are looking straight into the camera. As you can see, if I bring up my profile photo again, I am breaking this rule. I often break this rule on other social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram. I don't have a lot of photos of myself that I like where I'm looking directly into the camera, so that's why I choose this one. Of course, you are gonna make your choice based on what photos you have, so this rule isn't set in stone. Definitely avoid using a photo that's old and outdated. If you haven't taken updated photos recently, you should definitely consider doing that. And I have a whole video about brand photography that will help you get organized for that, and I will link to that somewhere over here. Now let's talk about your cover photo. This is an exciting opportunity to potentially bring in some graphic design elements to convey some important things. What do you need to convey? Well, according to my friend Vitor, you should give context for what you do, show your value, or give people a reason to keep scrolling down. What are some ways that you can establish credibility right away? Here's one idea media icons. If you've gotten press in your career, this is a good spot for them. Now, I didn't have these on mine before, but I've recently added them with Vitor's suggestion, and I'm really happy with how it looks. Media is an important aspect of my career, so that's why I've added this to my cover photo. You also want to consider how your cover photo loads on desktop as well as mobile. Note that they crop slightly differently. So just take this into account when you're designing. Now we've talked about photos, let's move on to tip number two, write a compelling headline. How can you grab someone's attention quickly? help people understand what it is you do, and also give consideration to what keywords people might be searching for on LinkedIn. Increase the likelihood that the right people find you. Now, for a long time, my headline said brand strategist. When I realized that my goal of being on LinkedIn, using my LinkedIn profile was actually to get more speaking engagements, I added the keywords keynote speaker. Hugely important because this field is searchable. In fact, it's probably a good moment for us to stop and actually think, what is the point of us being on LinkedIn? What's your goal? Is it to find a job? Is it to book clients? Is it to get more opportunities, speaking engagements? Be clear on that goal and use that goal to tweak your profile accordingly. Now, that's one of the most important things I'll say in this entire video, and it relates to your headline. So. Be clear with your communication, have catchy words and keywords, and you should be good. 
So let's keep moving along to tip number three. Use visuals in your featured section. When we think about visual social media platforms, we think about platforms like Instagram. LinkedIn is probably not the first one that comes to mind. However, this is one of the rare opportunities on your profile where you can show visuals, images, PDFs, media, and hyperlinks to something like a video. Now think about your work, where there are visual opportunities to show instead of tell. For some people, this is going to be more obvious than others. For me as a brand strategist and as a speaker, it's going to make sense to show an example or two of me at work. And if you want to see what I did with my featured section, you you should go over and add me on LinkedIn. Let's connect there. That's your featured section. Moving right along to tip number four, create an amazing summary. Write a LinkedIn summary. And this is one of the toughest challenges, by the way, on your profile. How do you say it all in just a few sentences? I have good news for you. I have a whole video with my best tips and examples on how to do this. And I'm going to link to that somewhere over here as I do. And I'll quickly summarize some takeaways. Write in first person, not third person. We know you're writing your own LinkedIn profile, so it just makes more sense to be direct, in my opinion. Two, describe your value in human terms. Avoid complicated or corporate jargon and tell me in simple words what value I get from connecting with you. Finally, make it easy for people to get in touch with you. This one is really important. Include your email address, but also describe the types of people that you'd like to receive messages from. If you can keep your summary as short as possible as well, it increases the likelihood that someone is going to read it from start to finish. Next tip, tip number five, incorporate storytelling into your experience. The section we all know about LinkedIn, which most resembles a resume, is the experience section, where you talk about the experience you have in your job or your industry. This section might seem like it's supposed to be boring and factual, but I disagree and I am not the only one. Recently, I recorded an episode of my podcast, Brand Therapy, with my colleague and co-host, Lauren, who is also a copywriter for many of our client projects. Lauren believes that this is the best opportunity to inject creativity and storytelling to grab people's attention. As you describe your experience, listen to what she had to say. I see a lot of people filling in the experience section kind of like a resume with like boring bullet points. And I say, throw those bullet points in the garbage and instead tell a story about what you've learned or how you've grown or how you've changed a community or a group of people at that particular job. I love that advice. If you're interested in listening to the full podcast episode, I'm gonna put a link to that in the description below. Your experience is the perfect opportunity to tell stories and increase the likelihood that someone will remember you. You'll make a strong first impression. Now for the final tip, tip number six, collect recommendations. I have to admit, this is my favorite part of a LinkedIn profile. I am on top of my LinkedIn recommendations. At the time of filming this video, I have over 75 recommendations that I've collected strategically. And it's a simple strategy. Anytime someone says something nice about me, in that moment, I ask them to connect with me on LinkedIn if we haven't already connected, and I request a recommendation from them to say those kind words directly on my LinkedIn profile. Think of displaying a testimonial from someone on your website. How do we know that they actually said that? There's no proof. When it's a LinkedIn recommendation, we know that it's coming from them, like the one I got from Brad. That's why I passionately and adamantly collect all testimonials in one place from clients, from people that have hired me to speak, from people that have hired me to do one-on-one -on -one work, or from people who have watched me in the audience. I collect all of them in one central place. And then when I go to apply for a speaking engagement, that's the first place I refer hires and organizers to look easy. I recommend getting in the practice of collecting these. Maybe you need a reoccurring calendar event or an alert monthly to collect these. That's what I do. Or at the end of a project, after delivering a speaking engagement, get in the rhythm of asking for these because I think they're gonna be useful proofs of concept. Now, I know I've given you a lot of links and resources in the description below and throughout the video. I have one more for you, my free PDF, LinkedIn Tips for Beginners. This freebie is really helpful if you're updating your profile and looking to develop a strategy to improve your efforts on LinkedIn. That is linked below as well. Now I wanna hear from you. 
I've done all the talking. What's the thing that you're most excited to update on your LinkedIn profile? Let me know in the comments below. As well, if I can connect with you, I would love for you to put your URL down below so others can connect with you as well. If you found this video helpful, I would appreciate a like and consider subscribing for more videos on social media, brand strategy, practical advice to looking good online. I've talked about a lot of tips in this video and shout out to my friend Vitor who helped me. Next, I'm actually gonna do a walkthrough through my profile and point out sections as well as updating your custom vanity URL and so much more. I am linking to that video next. I'm Phil Palin, thanks for watching. And that tutorial is coming up next.